Hey man, this is the last array for the whole merging paradigm that I'm trying to work on for the my story system. This is the merging array. Right now I have 16 of the mergers and you, you've already seen all of these components in a in the previous video, so I'm not gonna talk too much about that. Um, the entire array right now, the demonstration I'm gonna do, uh, the boxes that kind of look like that. So you can kind of see that we will get a mix between full partials and empty boxes. So if I were to put that through and activate it. This is a 8 game ticker liner that's MTE compatible. Um, it was created by fellow Militech member Crane, who also um, was the first one to use the, uh, the Tautic priority thing for the SVARs. Um, but yeah, so the idea is that the SVARs will send pairs through, and whenever they do, they will let the merger know that pairs are having sent, and they'll go into the silos. When the SVARs are done, they will ping the mergers to see whether it's done. And that kind of means right now the mergers are looking for two different conditions. One of them is, would there ever be a, a pair coming, I mean a partial coming through? So you can send it back to the SVARs. And the second condition is whether there are any fools. So if there are no partials and only fools, then we, we kind of skip phase two. If you remember from the SVAR videos, you have phase two, which is the looping phase where we continue to send partials, uh, pairs, partials, pairs, partials, and we keep merging them. There we go. We got our first uh, partial, which we would send to the SVARs to try to get merged again. And yeah, so if I were to ping this again, we're probably going to get a, a partial coming through. We got two. And there's probably going to be one more because that's just how I set up the system. Now the distribution here is quite straightforward. It goes into the box comparer. I think there is there one more box coming through. Yep, there we go. So we can take a look at what that does. It's going to go all the way to the next modules here. Now the reason why this system is kind of throttled in its distribution is because um, we need to give it time to know whether all of these um, mergers are, are active and then we have reaction time to to lock this system over here. So we we don't keep sending boxes and we don't get any overflow. We we try to handle we try to prevent that. Um, but yeah, why would we click this again? We got one more partial coming through, and that's kind of okay. So that, those are all the partials pretty much, and the rest of them are going to be full. So if I would ping it again, um, whenever the system is is done, which means all these mergers are done and, and the boxes have traveled to the end, which is kind of represented by this timeout over here. So there's the timeout clock. We do a subtraction on this memory cell over here. So right now all the mergers are done, but there is kind of a delay between the furthest module and the items traveling all the way down and going through all this logic. So. We handle that, and right now it's done, and it's now entering phase three because there are no partials to enter phase two. And there are, there's our full boxes. And to recap, the phase two is the merging process where we, we we get partials and pairs and whatever. And phase three is when we're done, and we want to group the items now uh, for encoding. And yeah. Also, before I forget, we got M two C O, which will get recycled back to the splitter. So I want to give a bit more description on the components for this new sorting system. Um, to do that, I want to talk about the time complexity dependencies on the three important modules. The first one is the shulker box splitter. Now each shulker box splitter is mostly item quantity dependent. So the longest time a, a splitter can operate is around hopper speed, unloading a full shulker box, which is around 1,700-ish uh, items, which takes around 12 minutes. There is transition delay between the item types, so it does have a little bit of a item type quantity dependency, but transition delays are as short as four game ticks, so it's not really that important. The second one is a bit more interesting. This is the uh, shulker box variable sorters, or the SVARs. Now each module has to map itself to an item type, which makes the item type dependent, and it has to eliminate item types as a whole. 
for every um, cycle that runs through it. You can imagine you have eight um, S files and you have maybe 800 item types. Then for every time you run the 800 items over, you remove eight. And you kind of represent that with this equation over here. So the initial Z is the amount of item types in the, basically a sample size. And it kind of shows you the linear um, relationship between how many cycles you need to perform. So if you had eight S vars and I think 800 item types, it would take around 50 cycles. But if you double that, then you it, it will halve the number of iterations. Now the last and most underappreciated uh, module, in my opinion, is the shulker box mergers. They are item quantity dependent, but they also take the least full box and fill it into the most full box. So uh, even though they are item quantity dependent, they are a lot. They are faster than the splitter. Um, the slowest a single shulker box merger can operate is when you have a half full box, two of them, and you merge it, and it takes around well six ish minutes considering a, a full unload of a completely full shulker box is around 12 minutes. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about these mergers. Bala first showcased this in, in his sorting system. He needed to merge boxes from his uh, item variable sorter. So in order to do that, he after a, a sorting cycle or his sorting batch, he would put it in a temp storage and then we'll merge them. Now, what he didn't realize was that this uh, merging concept is one of the fastest ways you can actually sort items in Minecraft. I'm going to show you why in the next demonstration. But to summarize all of this, there are ideal conditions for this sorting system. One of them is that you want to have more items that you're actually sorting versus the number of item types within your current uh, sample size. The second is that each uh, item type has a lot of boxes so you can actually merge a bunch of them together compared to the number of uh, item types that you're currently sorting. And what's quite interesting is that these conditions are mostly true for average day use. And they are especially true for something like a quarry, whether it's nether or, or mesa. It's also true for dig sorting, stuff like that. And, e and even deco to, to a lesser extent. Now to emphasize um, the real value of this type of sorting system, I'm going to be merging boxes that kind of look like this. So there's going to be 16 pairs in total, so we expect to get 16 full shulker boxes without any partials. Um, but what's going to happen is that these shulker boxes are going to get distributed uh, throughout the system and they're going to start merging in parallel. So if you were to think about that, um, other sorting systems, regardless of how much quote unquote parallelization they do, they, they all do item type parallelization, which in itself isn't really that great because uh, the, the type of items you're going to be sorting are going to be heavily dominated by, by a small group of them, especially one or two like stone and even if you were to parallelize, you, you're not actually parallelizing those item types. Now these mergers are going to start parallelizing the, the merging of the same item types. And we are going to be getting full shulker boxes significantly quicker than if we were to do it with a regular uh, sorting system. Now I'm going to tick warp this for, I think that's like two-ish minutes or something like that. And right now we've saturated all the mergers. Uh, look, look how pretty that looks, looks like that. And if I were to tick warp it again around the same amount of time. Yep, we're now beginning to receive the full boxes. So if I were to tick warp it, hopefully I don't I don't overshoot this. Maybe 200. I think it's safe to do a thousand. Alright, that looks good. So in total, I haven't even ticked warp the total of five minutes yet. And we have just completed all the boxes. And now the timeout sequence is going to begin. And we're going to be getting our, our full boxes. I guess I can do that. Yep. So because there are no partials, um, we now are just getting our full boxes. And 
not even five minutes we get 16 full, full boxes of the same item type now even if you were to account for the the splitters which are also paralyzed um and also the s files which don't actually operate on loose items like this it, it will take maybe an hour or so but if you were to unload all these items in a regular storage system it would take more than two hours so that should already show the uh one of the uh, key values of this sorting system is the parallelization of the same item type the second one is its um uh, customizability so right now i have 16 mergers i can make more if i wanted to i can make less um same with the s files and same with the splitters i can make as many as my current sorting system is required and what's quite unique and interesting is that you can actually create this sorting system in its own little um area so you can make a really big industrialized um sorting thing for maybe your quarries and have a couple of these smaller modules for your everyday use so it's both its customizability and its ability to sort items of the same type where it's where this sort of system shines but right now i have pretty much all the components done and all of them have been tested individually it's just putting it all together and then seeing where the where the slow parts are and and testing and improving and iterating and hopefully i will have a more complete design later